welcome to another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic Showcase number 14, which is called the Shutter Card Creator. So it's like one of their concept card um, creator die sets, and it creates this really cool mechanism that almost looks like um, the camera lens contracting in and then when you open the card it comes open to reveal the sentiment behind it. It's a really clever design. Um, so not only in this showcase are you getting the A4 die set which comes with the magnetic sheet in the pop of wallet that fits in the A4 storage folders from Tonic, you're also getting an A6 stamp set as well that coordinates with um, a few of the basic shape dies that are within the die set. So I'll show you the um, stamp set first and it does actually have some inspiration on the back of it for how you can get your um, shutter to work and this is using just the diagonal one but there is also a banner shaped one in here as well I think it's just using the diagonal one yeah and then they've die cut that and put it behind yeah so they're just using the diagonal you get the diagonal and you also get this one um, and I, I put the uh, one of mine together earlier um, and I thought you might benefit from seeing how it goes together so I have die cut everything ready to do a second card and I will show you that at the end of the video because um, I didn't get any instructions with mine because I haven't got the actual packaging so I'm presuming you will get instructions on the back of the packaging um, but because mine didn't come with them I thought I wanted to show you how to put it together just in case um, you've not seen one of these before or you don't get instructions and you can't figure it out but the great thing about this die set compared to other die sets I've seen that create similar styles of card is that they haven't predetermined where the aperture is so you get the you do actually get decorative panels to make the aperture in the center of the panel but there's nothing to say you have to use these decorative panels which means you can add the circle higher up you could even put two circles on if you wanted to and have a double shutter kind of um, mechanism for your card as well and i reckon you could even um transfer this onto a different card too you could maybe even make yourself um more of like a square card blank and cut part of the bottom off and redo your score line for the bottom half of this and make it a square kind of shutter card and another great thing is you can just use the main mechanism to create a simple gatefold card as well you don't you don't have to have this mechanism on the inside it's just a beautiful gatefold card and you also get a belly band to go around it to hold it shut but that could be used on any card of this size which is i think it is roughly um an a2 kind of size um, let me do it in inches to check. Slightly smaller than A2. It's like five. Oh no, it is five and a half. Yeah, it is five and a half. And then it should be four and a quarter this way. Yeah, so it is an A2 sized card, which is um, a really nice size actually. And a lot of the other rectangle dies that you've had in kits, stamp clubs, um, showcases, any of the ones that Tonic come out with in their online particularly, in their online releases, um, they are usually based on like an A2 kind of style card so any of those kind of um, layering sort of dies or pattern sort of dies um, should fit nicely on this too so if you are just going to use it as um, a gatefold card you've already got lots of bits and pieces to go with it if you do have those other ones in your stash as well which is also really lovely. Um, but yeah, let's look at the stamp set first and I'll show you which dies coordinate with the stamp set and then I'll walk you through the die set as well. So, um, this is the gorgeous stamp set. You've got loads of sentiments on here which are, you've got loads of sentiments actually in here that deboss um, and a couple that die cut out but it's quite nice having these smaller little eas easily stampable ones to kind of go behind the shutter mechanism because I think the idea of a shutter card is that you hide the sentiment behind and then you would um, open the card and reveal it but you could also put one of the images behind there, some of the um, stamped flowers or I think also a photograph behind there would look really nice as well and I'll show you how I added my sentiment behind my aperture and um, I kind of did it well I could have just stamped it straight behind the aperture but I decided to do it this way because then I thought if you did want to add a photograph it would show you how you could add a photograph behind it as well if that makes sense um, but you'll see that later on so let's go through all the sentiments first so we've got just for you smile lots of love and kisses um 
well done let's celebrate you thank you so much congrats thanks hello and then I love you as well so you've got lots of um, scope with your sentiments there isn't actually a happy birthday but you've got loads of other sentiments in there that will work for all sorts of different occasions uh, I think my favourite stamps from this set are this little cluster here of a flower and a couple of bits of foliage, the two extra pieces of foliage and this separate flower. I have cut and stamped them so many different times, um, I really really love them. And you also have an extra sort of bud flower as well. Um, I didn't actually stamp or cut that one, but that would work nicely in an arrangement with the other flowers too. And then you also have um, larger images that work with the circle and diamond dies from the die set that you can use. You, so you can use the circles on the front of the belly band or as like um, a medallion kind of design on the front of your card. Um, and then you've also got the diamonds that will work to go behind, like on the back of here. There's actually, they've used the diamond behind the aperture um, or you can build a pattern on your card, you can um, maybe even deboss the sentiments into the stamped one. In, maybe this one in particular would work the best. I think that I love you would fit quite nicely. So you could actually deboss on top of the stamped images as well. So that is the gorgeous little stamp set, which actually just as a standalone stamp set would be quite nice. Um, I mean obviously it is called the Magic Shutter card, but um, lots of those images would be useful elsewhere just on any kind of cards as well and then the ones that coordinate in the die set you have two different circles so you have the scalloped one which would go around both of those designs and then you also have this one which is slightly smaller and has um, the dotting detail on the outside of the cutting line so if you cut this into your card it gives you the dotted detail on the aperture not on the fall away piece uh, which is always nice to have the options and then you also have the tr um, triangle the diamond that cuts out both of those images as well um, and then you also have all of the ones to cut out your little leaves that are on here and the little cluster of well flower and foliage up there the little um, bud and also that individual flower in there as well so those are all the dies that actually cut out all of these different um, stamps that are in here but then you can use a lot of these stamps within the shapes as well so you can do just for you inside there or oh, I think all of these would fit inside um, the diamond depending you know sort of what orientation actually all look portrait they all fit in their portrait so they Every single one of those sentiments will go behind the aperture of the shutter card, which is nice to know. So, those are all the coordinating dies. Then, if I show you the one that I've actually done, you'll probably be able to see a little bit better um, what the kind of card looks like when it's finished. So, this is the one that I've done, and you've got the belly band that goes around the front. So, this piece is made up of this die which looks like this and this wraps round and there's about like this much of an overhang so probably a centimetre or a bit less um, that wraps round so you can stick it together so you could just have it as the longer piece being the front and the join is on the back or you can use the circle to cover the join and then you just have the continuous piece around the back as well whichever way you want to do it and then you also get decorative pieces to decorate that as well so there's two different designs that match the other designs within the die set too. So you've got this gorgeous one, uh, which I actually used on that card, and you have the longer version as well. And then you have this sort of one that's got more like leaves and swells in it, and you have the shorter version. And then for both sizes of rectangle, you also have just the straight cutting edge, and then you have the straight cutting edge with the pierced detail as well. So you've got different options just for doing that um, belly band kind of design. And on this one, if you look closely, you can see the little scallops poking out from behind the circle. So that is the difference in size between the straight edged circle and the scalloped edged circle that I was just showing you how they coordinate with the stamp set. So it's a tiny little hairs difference really, um, but you do have both of those dies in there as well that can work for creating that circle on there or cutting out these um, stamps which could then be on the front of here. Or you also have two different designs in the die set as well so you've got the just for you which I used here and then you've also got with love with some gorgeous like daisy sort of flowers around it so beautiful designs there as well 
then if I take that belly band off you can see how the actual gatefold card works and you'll be able to see the shutter mechanism you see it kind of opens like the iris of a camera it's not exactly the same but a similar kind of um, design and you can see it reveals the sentiment in there as well so really really pretty and I love these little flower elements that you can add around the opening as well and I also stamped them on the patterned papers all of the um, cardstock and Nouveau and stuff that I've used in this video and in my sped up video are all from the new um, Harvest Moon colour trend I was really loving that colour combination recently so I I, pick, I pulled out the colour trend and thought I'd use it in this video because um, I haven't done that many videos recently where I've actually like utilised a colour trend in making some cards so I thought it'd be quite nice for you to see it being used in action as well if you bought some of the bits um, after the launch of it um, a little while ago you might you know want to see it in action so this is the beautiful colour scheme obviously it's just white on the back but I've used that gorgeous um, gingery coloured cardstock on the inside and the beautiful pattern papers and stuff and I tried to colour the flowers in a similar colour scheme as well I really love this card you can hear the noise actually I quite like the noise it makes it sounds quite cool when it opens and closes um, but yeah I really enjoyed um, the effect of this card it was I'd say a bit fiddlier than I thought it was going to be, but I did move mine up in this one. So you might notice in that picture on the back of the stamp packaging, it's in the centre of their card. So the you know the top and bottom top and bottom are about here, and it's in the centre. And if you look in the die set, it's in the centre of this panel. But you can move it up and down, which is nice because I I do prefer if I've put like a circular element on the front of my card or something, I do prefer to put it in the upper sort of between the first and second third of the card um, so I, I like that you can move it, I think that's a really good advantage and there's also nothing to stop you using a different shaped aperture as well you'll have to think about it slightly with you know the spacing between these actual like shutter pieces so you wouldn't want to go any bigger than this shape but you could go hexagonal or maybe even oval actually, you might be able to go oval that way as long as this dimension isn't any bigger I think you might be able to get away with an oval or octagon as well, that would work quite nicely so I do think it's worth experimenting with different um, outside shapes maybe even a little heart too, you might need a smaller sentiment in the middle but yeah I think it would work with different shapes as well but I do really love how this turned out so the one that I will show you at the end of the video I'm using the other shutter piece, I'm going to use this one that's just a diagonal so I'm hoping I get it right for you um, but I'm just going to use that one to see how it works I mean I think it would just work the same way but it just pulls across diagonally so you would just have them going like this and then they'd come across I think that's how it works so we'll be giving that a go later but I do really love how this turned out so that is the one that I've already done and then you just slide the belly band back on here as well. Actually I'll keep this open so I can show you um, if I want to explain how one of the dies works. So let me just put all of these back on there so I don't lose any. So within the die set we have this main sort of piece that actually just cuts out a generic A2 gatefold card. Um, unfortunately it's a teeny weeny bit too wide for A4 cardstock to be able to get it out width ways this is slightly longer literally like millimeters than um, 21 centimeters but if you have American cardstock I think that is eight and a half inches wide or you can even have nine I think you have eight and a half by eleven or nine by twelve if you have definitely if you have 9 by 12 you could get two of these out of one piece of cardstock but with um, us in the UK you do kind of have to cut it the opposite direction so I've got a piece of vellum here and I don't know if you're going to be able to tell but even if I butt that up to the cut line I don't know if you if you really pushed it you could maybe just cut it this way on an A4 piece but you might have slightly ugly edges or they might not quite meet in the middle um, but I decided to cut mine out of A3 cardstock so I cut, um, you know, got two of them out of A3 cardstock and then used all of the rest of the leftovers to cut any other bits and pieces that I wanted but you could cut it this way on an A4 piece as well and then again you've got the, the leftovers to use for um, other bits in your project as well so to make this an A2 card they have had to go a teeny bit over the width of an A4 but I mean you might be able to get it to work you just might end up um, having slightly rough edges on the ends 
but I thought I'd mention that in case any of you were wondering. So basically, um, this die, it does just create a basic gatefold card, so you can use this any time with any card that you want to, and you have a beautiful gatefold card, completely cut for you, ready to fold and to use. But, you use this piece in conjunction with this piece, and then you get your shutter card mechanism. So you literally just put this down the centre of this and um, stick the two tabs under. I have actually, on mine, I turned them under and stuck them to the front. I, I was thinking that you could uh, turn them round the back and stick them to the back, but it's not quite long enough between the two um, score lines, so I'm presuming you are meant to stick it on the front of the card, plus it also makes it look a little bit neater on the back of it as well. Um, but that you add that piece onto your gatefold card, plus a circle cut out of this, and then your two shutter pieces whichever ones you decide to choose and that is how you create this shutter card and I will show you it properly towards the end of the video as well but you can basically cut that circle any way you want to in here um, which is really lovely and you could also cut two of them if you wanted to obviously go with the same die but you could get away with having two shutters on on the inside of one card as well which is quite interesting and something that I've not really seen before so I think this is a really cool die set actually um, and I think it's a really lovely different sort of style of card that you can make and the fact that they give you different variations in the shutter card piece as well not that I've tried this one yet but um, to have this variation and another as well I think that's a really nice extra um, thing to add in too and as well as having all of those like basic shape dies to create everything you also have all of the matte layers to decorate everything um, which is you know what tonic do best really so the central piece where you cut the um, circle aperture out of you have the rectangle to cut a panel so you can do it just out of pattern paper or a luxury cardstock or something um, but you also have some decorative detail so if you are going to use the decorative detail you do need to cut the circle in the centre of the panel but you know you're going to get it in the centre because you can use the um, circle area that's left after you've cut the decorative detail in both sides to cut your aperture perfectly in the centre uh, which is nice because it you know completely lines it up for you so you've got this sort of design with loads of leaves in there and a couple of flowers actually which matches one of the belly band designs and then you've also got this one which is kind of like almost half flowers sort of designs which also um, mimics the kind of design that's in here actually. I think it is the same design but it just looks really different because of the way it's placed in this piece but I think it is actually the same design. Um, and then you also get the panels to decorate the two flaps of the front of the gatefold card and you can decorate inside and outside as well um, and you get the two different patterns again that coordinate to decorate those and one of them has a pierced detail around the edge and one of them is just the straight edge so you've got different options for picking your detail on there as well. I've already showed you the two sentiments that are in there but you also get extra sentiments as well. Let me just zoom in actually it's probably going to be easier than me holding up um, the die set. So you also have this one that says just for you and it's actually in a very similar um, font or like mixture of font to the stamp so it actually says just in cursive and you in cursive and then four is in capitals and the stamp of the die is very similar to that as well I think I used that on one of my cards so you should see that cut out and then you've also got um, a scripty thank you as well which is really lovely and um, I'm not 100% sure about that one actually no, nope, yeah, they will both fit inside the circle. So you could hide these sentiments behind, or um, I've only done the one shutter card plus the one I'm going to show you how to put together, but I've also done three extra cards just using the dies to create normal kind of cards rather than an interactive sort of card. And um, these fit really nicely inside that aperture, and you can put acetate behind it, do it as a shaker card, or I did it as a window card as well, and then you have like the sentiment floating in the middle. That looks really nice too. And then finally, you have um, debossed sentiments, so you've got I miss you, special friend, uh, you make me smile and then I love you as well and um, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get these word dies, these debossing word dies to look nice because you kind of wish they were stamped so that they really stand out well. Um, you can go over with a pen and trace them, I've shown you that quite a few times, but actually the um, Baroque Rose coloured card that was in the Harvest Moon colour trend because I've been using that for all of my um, samples it 
debosses into that cardstock really nicely and it's very legible. So if you're um, if you haven't found a cardstock yet that you like the look of these deboss sentiments in them, try the satin finished mirror card. Um, I think it looks really lovely in the satin finish. It really stands out nicely and is very legible and easy to read, which is um, brilliant. But do also, if you do have a hot foiling machine, try them in that as well. I haven't done it in two maybe three years now but I did do it a while back um, it was when those perfumery die sets came out from Tonic and there was some of these debossing kind of dies in there then and they were quite new then and I tried them with my um, go press and foil and it did actually work so I do think these would work in a hot foiling machine so do give it a go and see if you can get it to work and then you can die cut using the um, diamond die that you get in here as well and die cut them out um, and then you'd have like a lovely foiled sentiment on your card as well. But I do think that they would work um, like that. So um, I'm going to put all of these dies back on here. And then I'll be back in a minute to show you my extra samples. And then we will put the um, shutter card together. Together as well. Together, together. Um, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so these are the three extra kind of normal non-interactive cards that I made with this die set. And these are actually um, my sped up video as well. Um, so that's why I thought I'd do the sort of putting together of the card in this video so that you've actually seen it go together. But I made these um, three cards. I was trying to think of ways of using the dies in different kind of application, I suppose. So rather than using like... Um, these little ones are supposed to decorate the belly band but why not use them to cut apertures in your card as well or like the diamonds are supposed to be to go inside the uh, middle of the shutter but diamonds tessellate really nicely so they make a really love background, lovely background or um, the fact that the sentiment fit inside the circle I thought that's the perfect opportunity to do like a window card so you can see inside the card and then also using like the actual um, decorative sort of panels that would layer onto the larger card but you can actually use them the other way on a smaller card to decorate as well and you could transfer any of these ideas across to actually making these kind of cards as well so you could have um you know this portion you could have used you know a small portion of it to decorate and add it in two separate portions to decorate part of the front of the card you could also um you know this kind of idea with adding just the solid color behind the sentiment on here you could have put this on the front just stuck it on one side so that when you open it um the set you would have the sentiment sort of in the same place but it would stick to one side of the card and then it would reveal um you know the main sentiment on the inside as well so um i do think these are really nicely transferable onto the actual card that you're supposed to sort of make with this die set as well so if there's any ideas that you see here um you know that you like you can easily add it onto more of a gatefold design and then have that um, shutter mechanism on the inside as well. So the first one is using the aperture circle that gives you the piercing on the aperture portion of the card as well. And originally in my first idea I was just going to like leave that as the focal element and this bit was going to just be plain white card. Um, but I felt like the circle was too small for the kind of size of card that I like to make. I mean it, it works perfectly for the shutter mechanism because it's a narrower piece of card that's on the inside but because obviously I'm using a, a larger piece that's the sort of width of the whole card of the other one um, is a little bit small so I thought well how can I show you how to sort of make a smaller aperture slightly bigger looking so that it works nicely on the front of the card and then that's when I sort of brought in some of the stamped elements to kind of bulk it out a little bit and then use some of the malted milk Nouveau drops to kind of bring the design out a little bit further as well you could even go around with like a second row of them to build it out even further too to just make it more of a, a fuller design for the front of a card and then I thought well what other way can I show you how to use an aperture I mean I do shaker cards quite a lot but I don't think I've shown a window card in a long time so it's quite nice to have that window looking straight through um, onto the inside of the card and then you can use a patterned paper to decorate the inside as well. And then when you write your uh, message to somebody you can put their name up here and then write everything else down here and you won't be able to see it through um, the aperture on the card as well. And I just um, double layered the sentiment and sort of offset it a little bit and then uh, added that onto the centre of the window so it looks like it's floating. Um, I also used some of the... Um, Nouveau Glimmer marker from the Harvest Moon colour trend to add a little bit of sparkle to the flowers as well. And then 
and then the rest of the card I was going to leave as plain white but then I thought well we have these beautiful patterned panels so why not cut one of them into the card back it with a different coloured card and then so it didn't look so sort of out of place of just being cut straight into the card I just took some tiny little thin slivers of one of the patterned papers and added borders to it so it kind of finishes off the bottom of the card as well and sort of makes a more complete design on the front of the card then um, I obviously just saw those diamonds and thought oh that's going to be perfect for creating a sort of scattered background down a card because they tessellate so nicely and I haven't done it perfect tessell tessellation I've kind of offset things a little bit so there's like a little extra gap here and stuff but I quite like that sort of um, not 100% perfect kind of look they're a little bit off from each other and I've mixed and matched solid coloured cardstock solid with a little bit of a luxury cardstock just added on top and then also that gorgeous satin with the debossed sentiments in it as well and you can see just how easy it is to read them it makes them really nice and legible doing them onto the satin mirror card and then I've also added the just for you um really delicate word sentiment there as well so if I show you both of them together you can see just how gorgeous these little sentiments look when they're die cut out um, and also that just for you would have worked in that uh, little window too um, and then I've just finished this card off with some Nouveau drops so that is the new Moroccan flame dream drop and then the malted milk gloss drop as well to finish that one off and then this one, I just wanted to try something a little bit different and use those little rectangles that are supposed to decorate part of the um, belly band kind of piece. But you could also have used the longer ones and done this vertically down the card as well rather than horizontally and got a completely different look. And then once I had done this sort of top portion, I knew I wanted it to look like this. I felt like the bottom corner was looking a bit empty, so then I thought, well, another kind of thing to show you is how you can sort of add a piece of patterned paper without having to use it over the whole background you can just sort of add a corner to a project as well or like add it behind apertures too so it kind of gives you um these cards kind of show you extra ways of using the dies from the die set but also other ways of using some of the color trend stuff as well because I probably didn't have as many samples as I usually do in my color trend video so um, I thought I'd just throw in some extra kind of ideas of how you might want to use bits and pieces from there as well. Um, I will link the color trend video at the end of this one as well and I might put it in the description too just in case uh, you haven't seen it and you like some of the colors that I've been showing you on um, some of the projects and um, it'd be nice you know if you want to go and have a look at that video as well um, and have an in-depth look at the colour trend so this is how um, this one turned out with a few of those little flowers again and using that gorgeous circular sentiment and I just backed the uh, with love with a piece of white card so that I could raise it up on 3D foam and you wouldn't be able to see it through there as well and I just I really like how that one turned out it looks very um, retro these colours they kind of make me feel like a bit of um, a retro kind of style it's that mustard colour with the burnt orange looks very sort of retro so um, I thought I'd go with sort of more of a retro design on that card as well so those are the three kind of extra cards and then this is obviously the one that I've already made because I've just kept showing it to you loads of times because it's really fun to open and close and then the belly band on this one I wanted to show you as well um, it kind of domes the, the central section on here so I decided to use two burnt orange kind of circles um, in the scallop design and I stuck one behind and one in front so it really reinforces that join in the cardstock there as well and then I backed this sentiment with um, some card that I had coloured with the rumba red ink pad because I'd stamped with the rumba red ink pad onto the patterned paper I brushed that onto um, some card and then put that behind and then I thought well if I'm going to add this with 3D foam I'm not putting tiny little pieces around the edge so I put 3D foam in the centre and then put glue around the edge and then it held it down into sort of like a domed shape which I thought is a really cool um, technique and it feels really like tactile and sturdy so I thought I'd show you that as well mention how I did that and then this just goes on there so I'll just get myself together and then we will put one of the cards together as well 
Okay, so I've got all of my bits and pieces together ready that I think I'm going to need to put the card together. You might be thinking, why are there two of the main card base? Well, you know when you die cut and you get all of the horrible lines on the back of it? They usually tend to just appear just where the metal was. But these creases, you kind of see them on the inside, so I wanted to make it look neater. So this is my main outside piece, which I have added on white on white for the um, detailed designs on these. And if I just score this, you can see how perfectly it meets um, in the middle to make your actual gatefold design. So you could just have a gatefold card like this. Um, but because we're sort of opening and closing this and it's probably going to have a lot of use and everything, it's nice to kind of line the inside. So if you look at the orange one, it was obviously cut from white, but I lined the inside with the orange. And basically how you do this, I know I've got the lines where this is, but it's much easier to have the fold lines exposed. Otherwise, you'll get a weird buckling and creasing in there from the cardstock. But um, I think this makes it look so much neater. So what I do is I take another one. So I've cut a second one of this. But this time we're going to trim this into uh, sections. So I've already stuck the panels on just to save a bit of time. But um, basically, you trim them, it's just over two inches, like a little hair over two inches. You just want to trim just before that score line, basically. You can see this, obviously, when you're cutting it yourself, but it is just a teeny weeny bit over two inches up there. And you cut that off and you get the first panel, which will line one of the insides. Then you can do the same on the other side, and we're trying to go a teeny bit over two inches and making sure we're kind of in line with um you know just in front of that score line and then we can trim that piece off and then that makes the other side this one it's not so evident um you know if you're slightly off on your measurements because we're putting white on top of white with the um the ginger kind of lined inside one it was a little bit more difficult because you wanted to make sure it was a little bit more accurate and then we're literally going to cut off two possibly three millimeters we're just getting rid of that fold line that's on there so if I trim that off and then show it to you, we've literally just cut either side of that fold line that was indented with the die. That's all we're doing so that um, we can line the inside with the panels and they won't interfere with the folding mechanism in there. So I just like to do that because I think it looks a little bit neater and actually while we're here with the guillotine, so that's going to go like that. We've got the middle piece, which I'll talk about in a minute, but I want to use these shutter pieces this time. But I wanted them not to just be white, I wanted to mat and layer them. I don't know whether that's going to um, impede everything, like going together. I'm hoping it doesn't. Um, it might, you know, it might catch, but I'm hoping it, it doesn't sort of do that. But the how I got the mat and layer is what I wanted to show you. So I die cut another one of these. So I cut two of them from white, two of them from the... Um, Baroque rose colour of um, satin mirror card and then I've already trimmed off the glue tab so I just did exactly the same thing just trimming inside of the score line but then you'll notice there is um, a kind of deboss line all the way around the edge which is where the metal of the die is but that gives you the perfect um, measurement or spacing evenly around the whole panel so that you can have the perfect matte and layer so all you do is you take that to your guillotine I don't know if you can really be able to see this on the camera but you literally just pick a line across here line that straight edge up you could do it at the top as well if you want to but I feel like it's easier to see if it's slightly closer to you so you just go along that straight line that you've already cut line up over here just so that little sort of um, indented bit is right at this cut line and then you can just trim it off and then do that on all of the edges all the way around it doesn't matter if it's 100% perfect or not but um, I think this just makes the perfect like little mat and layer to add on to your um, piece so that you know you've got extra design element basically so then you've got the mat and layer to go on there and hopefully that won't catch when we put it all together but if it does you'll know not to do that which is quite good so okay let's zoom out again so we've got that piece and also actually while I'm here I'll give you the top tip of do not use wet glue with this kind of cardstock. You might be tempted to be like oh that's just a small area I'll just use a bit of wet glue but I don't know what it is. I, sp I suppose it's the moisture or something 
you can really see it so wherever you have like scribbled the glue on the background you'll really see it and this is going to be like the main focal point of the inside of the card that mechanism so we really don't want to be able to see glue on that so you want to use double sided tape and if you want to make it so it's really not going to like um, hopefully it's not going to catch you can just sort of cover the whole back of it with some double sided tape and then I just use my scissors I have one pair that I use for anything sticky and you can just trim off all those excess pieces and if there's anything left after you've trimmed all of that off you can just fold it under as well and then you just take all of that backing off you could use scraps of double sided adhesive sheets as well for this kind of thing if you want to but you just make sure you fold any of those extra bits underneath and then you can just layer this and you have the perfect guide because it's the same size as you know the areas that you cut off um, they're already indented on the other one so now we've got those two pieces in here as well which will hopefully go back and forwards like this um, this one because I've put the decorative panels on the inside we are going to lose part of that decoration when we stick um, these on but it's not really that obvious so it doesn't matter too much um, okay let's look at the middle section of the card so that is everything that you need for the main sort of portion and we'll stick those other panels on in a second but this middle section so basically you get the outside edge for this rectangle and you get the design but there are two different designs that are both in half so the way I do it is I tape one half design to the rectangle and then I run that through the die cutting machine and so then you have a rectangle cut out then then I take all of the pieces out of the die cut and out of the die and I flip the whole thing around and I line up that rectangle die back over the top of what it's already cut so it's not going to cut again but you still have the detail die stuck to the rectangle die and then you can line it up and cut the other half of the detail you don't have to do it that way you could freehand just take the two dies apart um, and you know place the die the detail die back on there again and cut it uh, but that's the way I do it if you wanted to know um, and then I just you get the perfect circular area in the middle so then I just placed one of the circle dies I did the one with the piercing on the outside um, and put that in the center to cut out my aperture so that's going to be where my sentiment will go but then I also wanted a piece to um, back it I wanted this gorgeous um, sunlit no it's not called sunlit sienna sienna treasure I think it's called um, I wanted a piece of this card to go behind it so again I cut the rectangle and then um, I just put the circle as close to the middle as I could get it and then when I stuck them both together it's almost perfect but there was a little bit of extra card on this side so all I did was just then take my scissors from the back and trim around it to get it to be the perfect aperture and it doesn't really uh, matter that it, it was slightly off because you don't know and then to get it to be the perfect placement on the centre of the inside piece I just took this, held it to where I wanted it and drew around it onto the solid piece and then just took my scissors and cut it slightly bigger than the pencil line and then you know that that's going to fit perfectly over there because no one is going to see that so it doesn't matter that you've hand cut it yourself and for the other one that I did this one was much easier because I just did the patterned paper all I did was I stuck the pattern paper to the solid white one and then die cut through both layers together and that was how easy it was to get the perfect placement for that one but when you're doing it like this this was the way that I did it so I thought I'd mention it you might find an easier way to do it as well but I just wanted to show you which way I had, do I had done it um, actually you could also die cut your pattern straight into this and then just have the card to map behind it the um, the sienna card could go behind it but anyway there's probably multiple different ways of getting your pattern and everything to line up but this is the way that I did it so that is what we're going to come back to when we put this piece together but first of all we want to stick all of these panels on the inside here so I was just using wet glue for this so I've got the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and you just want to when you're placing them down focus on lining up the outside edges because we've cut a little bit away from the fold so it shouldn't interfere with that um, and this doesn't matter if you're putting um, glue all over the back of it because we've stuck it onto white card so it's not going to get through to that um, pearlescent or satin cardstock and make it buckle and we just want to make sure all of the outside edges are lined up nicely and the good thing about using a wet glue is that you can maneuver it a little bit if you need to okay so that one 
makes that look a million percent better with not having the sort of cut edge on the inside you've now got the beautiful pattern on there and it's all nice um, and smooth and everything because you've got the two professional sides basically and then we can do this one and place that one on there make sure that's nicely in line and then we can do the middle one on the back so you could stamp your sentiment straight onto this piece of card but the way um, I'm going to show you how I've done mine means that it's sort of showing you how you could add a photograph um, behind there as well which is why I thought I would show you it that way rather than just stamping through the opening but the way you would get it to um, you know in the perfect position to stamp through the opening is you would fold these pieces down you would put this in the right position you just want to center it between those two score lines and then um, you could take this in place you can hold it in place and then you can just stamp straight in the center with your sentiment and that's how you get it in the perfect position because you know when you're going to put this back it's going to be right in the center of your card um, but the way I've been doing it I'm going to stick these together first actually um, is I've been stamping on a separate piece of card and putting it behind there but it also shows that um, that could be a photograph as well that you could put behind this aperture and if you did want to put a photograph behind it this is how you could do it to get it to be in the perfect position so what I do is I take my stamped sentiment or your photograph and then you place it behind here and you make sure it's in the center so that's roughly how I want it to be so then I will take some low tack tape where's my dispenser and you just want to use little pieces and you can um, you know tap your fingers on it a little bit so it's not going to be too sticky and then just hold that in place so you're just taping your sentiment in there now so it's sort of stuck in there turn it over and add double sided I'd say especially if you were going to use a photograph because I think glue would show through a photograph actually so just add some double sided, take off the backing and then turn this over and again we're lining up that bottom glue tab um, to the bottom of the card and we're lining up um, in the middle of the main central panel of the card and then you could just press that down into place and then the tape will lift off and you've got your uh, stamped image or a photograph in the perfect position for later. So we've got that done. Now we need to um, add the little shutter panels on here as well. So I've added glue to the outside of these and the idea is that you stick these down so you sort of hold them like this in position but when, you, when you've taken the tape off you will close this and those glue tabs will stick onto these side pieces so that when you then open the card they move with it to give that mechanism of like the shutter sort of effect. So the other one was a little bit different. When you're doing it with the other die, let me just get that out so I could show you. Um, when you've got this die and you've cut two of them to make your shutter mechanism like on the first one that I showed you, um, you have this kind of flag tail banner piece and when you put the two of them together you want this point to be over the top of the other one's point and this point to be under the other one's point. Um, you can see how this one is going on top up here but then so this is the right hand one is going on top but if I flip it the what was the right hand one is now going underneath um, so you kind of put one on top and one underneath and that's how you get that kind of mechanism to work really nicely but for this one it's obviously not going to do that because we've only got just this sort of shutter coming in like that so I think they've done it so that those two lines just butt up against each other and that's how to get the perfect placement I think that's how it goes that looks right to me I think so in that case I'm going to do the same trick again um, I'll use those same pieces of tape actually I'm going to tape them together so that they're in proper position where they should be and then before with the other one you had a tiny gap in the middle so you could tell where the centre was going to be but with this one it's going to be slightly more tricky because I think we're going to have to maybe just go 
like that actually, that looks quite centred. So we're kind of looking at these distances up here to where the aperture is. You kind of want it to be an equal amount above and below the circle aperture. So I think that's going to be a decent kind of position to put them in. And if you're moving this um, up or down, this is still how you do it to get it in the right position. So for the other one that I did, I just put these panels further at the top so they were in the middle of the aperture that was further towards the top as well and if you had two of them if you were going to put one circle near the top and one circle near the bottom you'd just have to kind of do this twice to get them in the right position but you're basically just trying it out and seeing um, so you want to make sure that this whole piece that we've stuck together with a bit of temporary tape is in the middle of the two score lines um, that we've got here and here because the way it's going to work is this panel is going to pick up that sticky part when we remove the liner of it. Um, so we want to make sure that's nicely in the middle so it's not lopsided. And then we're also looking for it being in the middle up and down here. And I think that is about a good positioning. So now we've got to be careful. Hold that in place. And then we can take the backing off of one. I'll fold this over. And then keep holding it tightly, take the backing off the other one and then fold it over as well and then they have got a bit of tape on them so it's going to be a little bit fiddly to get it open but we can just go in and pick that tape off and then the other pieces come off. So now we've got both of our panels stuck on like that which doesn't really look much at the moment but this is how the mechanism works you see when it's shut they'll go together and then when you open it they'll come apart but it, they will be held down by the aperture though so it makes it a little bit um, of a better sort of finish so now we've got these bits in place the final part to make the actual shutter mechanism is just to add this piece in position so we know exactly where this is going to go because we've tested it out so many times and I actually was just placing the top one on first so just take this is this pattern because it goes um, one way up and then you flip it. it it doesn't really matter which way up you have this piece the pattern goes in opposite directions so whichever way up you have it will look the same but so you're, you're putting the adhesive on the back of this tab and then this tab is sticking to the inside of the card because if you put it over the card and stick to the outside um, the, t the tension's too much and it kind of wants to bow like the distance isn't quite enough so we're sticking it on the inside of the card and all we're doing to get this in the right position is making it so it's um, central between those two score lines and that the fold is right up against the top edge of the card so we can just line it up like that and we've got that first edge down and then we can test that it's going to look good and that's going to work really nicely actually I like that design as well, that does look good okay and then we can stick the bottom of the panel down too and again we're sticking it on the inside of the card so we just make sure those two are held down and not in the way and then we can just add that panel there as well and now that completely holds them down and then you can go like that and they'll shut together and then when you open it they reveal the sentiment and the nice thing is because it's a gatefold card it will stand really nicely on a mantelpiece so if you give it to somebody um, it will stand up really nicely and show off the sentiment it will stay open and show it off nicely so this one is far more fancy than this one because I've used all of the patterned panels whereas this I focused on like patterned papers um, but I wanted to also finish this one off with some extra design as well I'm not sure if I want to put flowers on the inside too actually I wasn't planning on it but I do really love how that one looks with those um, flowers on the inside I didn't have the right alcohol markers in any of my ranges that I own um, to colour this kind of colour so I went with a red tone so I've gone with um, sort of reds and oranges rather than um, the yellows that I did on this one so I thought that would look quite nice. Um, I've just got to decide, do I want to do that again on this one? Do I want to have some kind of florally element on the inside? I mean, I could just leave it as one of those, actually, just to tie the flowers into the inside. And then you want to make sure when you're doing this, 
only put glue on the part that's going to stick on here because if you start sticking it onto this then the whole mechanism isn't going to work so I was being extra cautious and only putting glue on like the top part of that flower even though I could have put it a bit further down I was putting it like that and then I know that nothing's going to touch the mechanism and prevent it from working then for the front of the card I was just leaving this one as a gatefold I haven't done like a band to close this one so what I was thinking is I wanted thank you on there and then I wanted like um, a cluster of flowers and I would stick them just to the one side of the card I think unless I want some hanging over onto the other side but I think I'm just going to stick them on the one side or maybe actually do you think it would be strong enough to hold it shut if you had it might be I don't know actually if you stuck one of these on each side it might be strong enough to hold it shut if I use um, some double sided foam tape this has got a really good adhesive on it you can see if that would work actually because it might be nice for it to sort of be held shut a bit more so if we put one kind of here and then one on the opposite side we can see if it'll hold it, I don't know if it will hmm, not quite really maybe if I put a few more it might work could like, hmm, no maybe it's not going to hold it shut anyway I'll just go with my original idea of um, putting some of these on there we can just have that one on the opposite side and then I'll put the thank you there I think and then just add a few more bits of um, foliage and little florals coming down the side of the card I really like that they've given you these little extra stamps I think they really make this set um, you know it's a comp oh it's gone a bit blurry I think they really make it um, a complete set that ev is, you know it's got everything in that you can work with straight away which I think is really lovely Okay, so I'll finish this off off camera, I think, just adding um, that little cascade of the flowers down the side there as well. So I hope you enjoyed this up-close video looking at showcase number 14. Um, I hope you found the actual construction portion helpful. I presume it will come with instructions, but just in case, um, I thought I would show you this in case you needed to know um, how it goes together. But... I think overall this is a really lovely concept card and I think you can use it in so many different ways um, for like hiding different things behind there or um, you know experimenting with different aperture dies that you have in your stash as well to change the shape of them or to put it on the inside of different um, shaped cards as well I mean you could adapt this for a larger card and um, you know you could use the the general design of things but adapt them by adding extra pieces of cardstock on so that these could be further away from each other and stuff as well or you could just use this for creating other um, interactive style cards as well because you've got this piece that goes around and stuff you could really um, have a play with different ways of cutting the pieces and cutting other bits into them and stuff I think there's a lot of um, versatility and different ways of using the bits and pieces from this die set so I really hope you enjoyed the video um, if you're interested in getting this die set there'll be affiliate links below the video in the description and also on my blog as well um, and I hope you got a little bit of inspiration from it and maybe enjoyed seeing some extra colour trend cards as well if you bought any of the Harvest Moon colour trend I'll also link that video um, below and at the end of the video as well two little videos pop up and I'll put it as one of those ones too but thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video bye